In this video, we're going to look at proofs that involve um, the addition and subtraction postulates for segments and angles. But before we actually get into the proofs, um, instead of using the postulates, we're going to actually use what we are going to call the segment and angle um, subtraction and addition theorems. And what that means is a theorem is something that you could prove to be true versus a postulate is something that we accept to be true. So instead of, for the sake of time, instead of going through and proving these theorems, I'm going to give you the theorems, and they really come from the postulates. So let's go ahead at the top of our page, and let's just add that in there. So um, the addition, so let me just write angle or segment, because these apply to both, addition theorem. Basically, what it says is if you have congruent angles, so or congruent segments, I'm just going to say congruent parts. Actually, let's just write it like this. Let's just say congruent plus congruent is going to be equal to congruent. So meaning, what that means is if I have two sets of congruent parts, I add two more congruent parts, the entire things are going to be congruent. So congruent parts plus congruent parts are going to equal congruent wholes. And then the subtraction pretty much works the same way, except for now we're going to reverse it. So segment, so angle and segment subtraction theorem. basically means if I take congruent holes, so the whole thing, I subtract off two parts that are the same, I'm going to be left with congruent parts. So that's what it's saying. So it's using the, the, the postulates to come up with these theorems. So instead of actually doing proofs of the postulates, like I said before, we're going to go right to just using the theorems. So let's go ahead and look at um, this scenario here. So we have, we're given that AB, so this segment right here, this part, is congruent to CD. So that distance between A and B is the same as the distance between C and D. We want to show that this entire segment AC is congruent to this entire segment BD. So when you look at this, hopefully first thing is you have to believe it. You have to believe that it's true. So hopefully when you're looking at this, you believe that it's true. And it might just be a matter of, well, how do I write that up? So what I see when I look at this is I see this shared piece. I see this part right here that's the same. So if you kind of look at it with colors, purple plus green is going to equal purple plus green because the two purple parts are equal. And this green part is shared among both larger segments. So that is actually going to be congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. So really what I'm doing here is I'm applying that segment addition theorem. I'm taking two parts that are the same, and I'm adding two parts that are the same. So that means that the holes have to be equal. So essentially what I'm going to be doing to get from one to the other is I'm going to be adding segment BC to each pieces to each part um, to be to show that these are the same. So since the originals are the same, the little parts, BC is the same. If I add congruent parts to congruent parts, then the whole things are going to be congruent. So let's go ahead and just kind of write that up. So the first part here is that AB is equal to CD, and that was given to me. So notice I didn't put the bars above it because I'm using equal, so equal you're talking about the measure between these. Um, if I wanted to make it say congruent, then I'd put the little segment bars above. So that's given. I do need to mention that BC is equal to BC by reflexive property since it's shared among both larger segments. And then from here, what I can do is just take these two pieces, so congruent parts plus congruent parts are going to make the whole things equal. So that's going to make AC equal to BD. And that is called the 
segment addition theorem because I'm adding parts of segments together. So segment addition theorem. So part, congruent parts plus congruent parts are equal to congruent wholes. If we look at the next one, now we're dealing with angles. So let's look at what's given to us in the picture. So we're given the angle 3. So this angle right here is congruent to angle 1. And what I want to show is that ABF, so this whole angle here, I want to show that that's equal to EB. G, so EBG. So I want to show that this purple angle is congruent to this green angle. So again, the first thing you have to do is believe it. Why is it true? So if I look, I have angle 3 and 1, which are the same parts, and then you have this shared piece right here. Angle 2 is in both of the angles. It's in the green angle and it's in this purple angle. So since it's in both angles, if I take angle 3 and I add angle 2 to it, and then if I take angle 1 and I add angle 2 to it, you're going to get to the larger angle. So if I take A, B, F, I, that's made up of parts 3 and 2, and then this large angle over here, E, B, G, is made up of parts 1 and 2. And since 2 is the same angle, by reflexive property, it's the same angle that's shared among both larger angles. It's going to be congruent to itself, which means I'm taking congruent parts. I'm adding more congruent parts, so I get congruent holes. So starting off with our given here, angle 3 is congruent to angle 1. I know angle 2 is congruent to itself because it's shared among both. So that's by reflexive property. Anything is congruent to itself. And then from here, if I add those up, which is what I did up top there, I'm going to get the larger angles. So this is going to be by the angle addition theorem. So angle addition theorem. Congruent parts plus congruent parts equal congruent holes. So let's look at the next page, which is going to be now using subtraction. So if we look at this, we're starting with, so notice again the bars are on here, and now we have congruent. So you can kind of switch between them, just make sure you're consistent. So if I make these equals, then I should drop the bars above. So AE, this whole segment, is congruent to BD is what it's telling me. So it's telling me that the holes are congruent. I want to show that this part is congruent to this part. So you know that this whole thing here is congruent to this whole thing. And we want to show that those pieces right there on the edges are congruent. So hopefully you're believing this because that's your first step to be able to prove it is you got to believe it first. So I believe it's true because if I have the whole segments equal, I have this shared piece. So basically if we got rid of this shared piece from the large pink segment, we would be left with EB. And then this large purple segment, if I got rid of this shared piece, I'd be left with AD. So since the whole things are congruent, if you subtract off something that's congruent from both sides, you're going to be left with congruent parts. So again, to get from one to the other, I'm really just subtracting off segment DE. So if you subtract off segment DE, it'll get you to where you need to go. So I have AE is congruent to BD. So that's given to me. I have to mention that this piece is the same in both larger segments because it's congruent to itself using reflexive property. So notice I'm always having those two congruent statements first, and now I can do my addition or subtraction theorem. So in this case, I started with the whole thing. I'm subtracting off parts, so I'm going to be left with a part. So now I can say AD is congruent to BE by the segment 
subtraction theorem. And then the last one here, looking at angles now, I have angles 1 and 4 are congruent and angles 2 and 3 are congruent. My goal is to show BCD, so BCD is congruent to angle FCD. So this is not um, going to be subtraction because I'm starting with two sets of parts. But this one, instead of using reflexive property, I don't have anything that's shared among the pink and the green, but I have two sets of congruent parts. So when you look at this, if I take, let's just pretend for numbers for a second, if this was, um, let's say, 60 for angles 1 and 4, and these were 30, well, if you take 60 and add it to 30, and you take 60 and add it to 30, you're going to end up with the same thing. So it makes perfect sense why it's true, so we just have to write it up. So there's nothing that's shared here, but they did give you your congruent parts. So we're given this. We were given angles 2 and 3 are congruent. So if we added 1 and 2 together, we get this whole thing, BCD. If we add um, 3 and 4, we're going to get DCF. So adding these up, so add those add these, and you end up with BCD is congruent to FCD. And again, I was adding, so pay attention to what you're, if you're adding or subtracting. So this is the angle addition theorem. So those are using these um, theorems. So remember, the theorems come from the postulates we would use the postulates to prove the theorems, but for the sake of when we're doing our congruent triangles proofs, we're just going to use this theorem because it's a lot quicker than using the postulates. Um, so what I want you to do is I actually want you, there's no check your understanding page here, but what I want you to do is go to your mini proofs and complete the section on segment and angle addition postulates um, in there. So just those problem. So the segment and angle addition and subtraction theorems or postulates in that mini proofs packet.